Hello folks, I'm Ian Overstreet and welcome to the Night Sky Imaging YouTube channel. Um, today we're going to look at flat darks and bias frames. Um, the argument as to uh, what uh, would be best to use with CMOS cameras is is out there and, uh, and I've been using bias frames most of the time because it's so convenient. Um, when I shoot uh, flats, uh, uh, I shoot them much more frequently, and uh, and with the Ross, I have to shoot them after after each session, and so that means I need a new set of, of flat darks uh, because I doubt very seriously the uh, flat calibration exposure is going to be the absolute same. And uh, but bias frames, you can build a category a library of those and use them over and over again. So it is convenient, but is it better? Or is it worse? So I thought I would take a look at them and uh, let's try to decide. All right, let's head over to uh, Pix Insight. And let me hide a few windows here. We don't need any more. Then I see that you don't. And back to Pix Insight. Uh, one more time. And back to Pix Insight. Okay. Um, I have up here the uh, weighted batch processing script because uh, I wanted to uh, show you what happens uh, if you're using Pix Insight. And of course, that's what I do use. And uh, if you're taking flat darks, then you're going to load those uh, flat darks in your uh, you're going to load those in your dark uh, folder or your dark section here so uh, and your flat dark should have exactly the exact exposure that your flats have which is in this case 8 seconds uh, 8.12 seconds so you should have a, a, a flat darks that match that. And uh, in this case, I'm running bias frames and I'm getting ready to do this on a uh, uh, some data that I took last night of the um, uh, LDN 1235, which is the Shark Nebula. I've been working on that with the Rasa trying to figure, figure out the best exposure. And uh, so far, the, uh, they're winning and I'm losing. Uh, but at any rate, that's part of the fun is in the trying and the experimenting. But what I wanted to show you was that what happens in calibration, if you click on your flat, flat frame and look at the calibration diagram, you see where the flat frame will have the master bias subtracted from it in order to come up with your calibrated flat. And so if your flat frame has an exposure of 8.12, and if the bias frame really is the electronic signature of your camera, and you just want to subtract that from your bias, it does make sense that it should have an 8.12 second exposure, or whatever your flat exposure happens to be, in order to get a calibrated flat. And there, and, and there you're accurately removing the bias from this. If you're taking a a traditional bias frame, then you're taking it at your camera's fastest exposure. If you've got a Nikon DSLR, that's one eight thousandth of a second. If you have a, uh, a, Z a ZWO camera, that's usually 0 .003, which is one three thousandth of a second. And so uh, there is a big difference in exposure time between 8.12 seconds and uh, the fastest exposure of various cameras. So uh, let's we're going to take a look at a flat dark and a bias and see if we can make sense out of it. And um, and I'll just leave it up to you guys. Uh, but I can already tell you that my plan going forward, as much as I don't want to, and I'm kind of screaming and kicking, is I will be taking flat darks. Is it a big difference? I'll let you guys see. Um, while we're on this, 
And in order to get your calibrated light frames, then your lights are, have the master dark signal, all of that noise that's in your master dark is going to be removed from your lights. And then it's going to be divided by that master flat that has had the bias signature removed already in order to get your calibrated light. And that's what's going on under the hood. Oh, there's a lot of other things going on, but that's essentially what you're ultimately getting is a calibrated light frame uh, with your flat vignetting and dust crud and all that plus the electronic signature coming from the bias or the flat dark all of that subtracted out of your light frame so with that then you start the process of of debayering and then integrating those lights so that you have uh, image to work on in pics so let's exit out of this and uh, I'm going to open up uh, I went back to some data that I had not processed all the way back to 116 where I was using flat darks and um, so at this time uh, I had 3.71 second flat darks that I had taken and I had 300 second darks that I had taken and these of course are the bias and I did two runs I have flat darks and then I have bias and in this case, I have a bias frame, and I want to open that up. And uh, we don't need the high rejection or the low rejection. We just want the bias frame. And let's bring up the uh, flat dark. Also, taking the same time, same. Uh, here it is. And we'll get another high low rejection and all we want really is in this case this flat was taken at a rate of 3.71 seconds much faster so uh, let's do a boosted well let's just do a stretch on each one and let's uh, let's zoom in please unlock your device what device? I have no idea what they're talking about. Um, and let's just drag this over and on top of this image so that we can match up uh, identical. So here's the bias signal uh, with a flat dark and a bias signal with a traditional bias. And I call them both bias signals because what it really entails is just removing the electronic signature of your camera and every camera has its electronic footprint it's not noise it's just what happens when you turn the electronics on to the sensor and so uh, it's not supposed to be there and so we try to remove it uh, if you kind of venture out with each one they look uh, quite a bit alike but there's I don't know how well you can see it, but there is, there are more issues here with the uh, 3.71. And this is the best uh, zoom for uh, comparison. And uh, it just looks like it's noisier, that there's just more stuff that I would want removed if it's in the electronic signature. And so this is at the very fastest rate, and there's less stuff. So uh, zooming in really doesn't help that much, but if we go way in, we didn't hit it right. If we go right way in and compare, it looks awfully close. It's just when you get back out here, and let's try that zoom that this just looks a lot more noisier, more pronounced noise structure. I really have no idea how this is going to show on YouTube. And I doubt very seriously you're going to be able to see too much if you're using a mobile device. But on a larger screen, possibly in YouTube, you'd be able to see what I'm seeing here. So, and then at a native 
uh, resolution, um, I can still see, I can still see a difference. And uh, based on that, I guess I am going to make my decision to go with the flat darks from this point forward uh, on new data captures. And will it uh, make a significant difference? Let's do a boosted stretch on each one. And uh, let's do another zoom like here. And this may show it better, but this just shows much more black and white contrast, contrasting noise. And there ought to be a difference. We're, we're taking this much faster. Uh, at, this bias frame is much faster at one three thousandth of a second than um, is this uh, 3.12 second image. So that's what I'm going to use. I'm not sure if this was able to clear things up for you, but I would suggest that you do your own uh, test and uh, see what you think. And uh, heavens, you may find yourself doing what I'm doing and shifting over to flat darks. Have a great day. Catch you later.